And let's just jump into this right now. So this is 12 dying kitchen trends. Now, of course, in the description or the title of this live stream, it's question mark. You know, are they really are they really dying? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So let's just jump right into this. Now, I got to bring up the article on my screen here so that I can read. I'm going to read to you what they said about these as we go through. <clears throat> You can probably guess what some of these are, I'm assuming, and uh, you're welcome to do that in the chat if you want. And you're, uh, of course, welcome to put your opinion in the chat as we get into this. So, all right. So number one is, uh, you know, it's all, it's on every list. It's on every list, unfortunately. And um, if you can guess what it is, I'll give you a cracker. Uh, it's the all white kitchen. The all white kitchen is just one of those kitchen trends that seems to get a lot of love and a lot of hate. Um, and so we're going to chat about that tonight, the all-white kitchen. Here's what a definition of an all-white kitchen is. It is... Um, <clears throat> get that off my screen. There we go. Okay. It looks clean and fresh and represents purity. Okay. Overall, it's considered a happy color. One of the other benefits of white is, in comparison to darker cabinets, is that it brightens up the space. Unless you have tons of natural light in your kitchen, dark cabinets can just make the space look dark and overwhelming. Now, that's just coming from the Google, and that wasn't in the article, but uh, that is just from the, the, uh, from the Google. So this is the, what the article has to say. And maybe what I'll do, I think I can share my screen so we can read it all together. And yes, I will link to the article um, if I think of it. <laughs> we'll see. Just give me one second and see if I can find this here. 12 kitchen design trends. But I think that's it. Let's go. Here we go. All right, let me just zoom in on this a bit. My bad. Here we have it. Hope you can see that okay. I can make it bigger in a second here. All right. So... This is uh, the all-white kitchen. Uh, all-white everything is on its way out. For the past decade, we've been seeing white walls, white tile, and Carrera marble. People are tired of these muted palettes, and designers are bringing in color, which we love. All right, so most designers also agree that white-on-white -white kitchens will look dated in 2023. So what color will be the new white? There isn't just any one answer, of course. Uh, but monochromatic kitchens lack depth and visual interest. Complementary hues in a kitchen can elevate the area while still being timeless. Well, I don't know. What, you th what do you think about that? But uh, so that's the all white kitchen trend. Now, uh, as you look through, is that true? Does it look kind of, uh, you know, does it lack depth? I don't know. You know that I love the white kitchen. Um, so for us uh, talking about this, you know, you know where I stand on some of these issues. So I, I just, I, I love the white kitchen. Here's a couple look looks at them. And then I, I'm going to read you what I had to say about it. I wrote this down, funny enough. I hardly write anything down, but I'll read it to you anyway. Uh, here's another look at a white kitchen. That's pretty nice, actually. The all-white kitchen. And, you know, there's this, this has depth to it, I believe. And here's another one, pretty sleek looking. Okay, I get it. It might look a little bit um, sterile, as they say. But look, they got those what are they called macaroons or something i don't know those those colorful cookies and you got a tree and a cup so what else can you ask for um but here's here's my take on it uh this is this is what, this is what i think i do think that all, the all white kitchen can look uh bland all right it can um using now this is this is designer speak so you'll you'll uh, applaud me for this using color and texture and i didn't get this from anywhere this is my own brain Using color and texture will help make the all-white kitchen look more appealing. However, the white kitchen, as a trend, is still alive and well. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's just one of those trends that it's good to put on a list because it, it just creates a little bit of tension, right? It's because people love all-white kitchens or people just hate them. Like, no, they're bland. They got to go. I'll let you decide. Is the all-white kitchen something that you think uh, is going to die out? Or is it just going to stick around, you know, like just forever like a, a nagging cold i guess i don't know um <laughs> that sounds like a bad thing uh anyway the all-white kitchen let me know what you think so that's one that's the first one that we think is gonna is gonna die in in 2023 but i don't think that i think it's 
it's going to be fine. No problem there for me. Here's let's go to the next one. All right, the open concept. How do we get rid of this thing here? Here we go. The open concept. So let's go back to our article and we'll see what the article has to say. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like producing this on the fly. So you just have to bear with me. I need more screens. All right, here we go. Interior designer. Oh, no. Okay. Open kitchens. What's going on with the open kitchen? Um, Nope, that's not what I want. There we go. Keep going. There we go. Open floor plans and particularly open kitchens are a controversial topic in the design world right now. While it's a practical choice for some, many homeowners have grown tired of this design choice in a post-pandemic world. Harris's clients, this is the person that they're interviewing, um, have been asking to close up their kitchen walls, especially for families. People no longer want to see dirty dishes, boxes of cereal uh, while they eat dinner or entertain. We have clients with open floor plans who are building walls to separate their kitchen in their from their dining rooms. And this more traditional style is coming back with the kitchen, dining room, and sitting room all compartmentalized. I don't like that. It allows you to curate a unique uh, space. And a little spoiler alert on the next one, Matt Black Hardware. Um, so what do you think about that, the open concept? Um, I don't really know. Here's what the Google says, an open concept kitchen. There are no walls separating prep and cooking space from the living and dining spaces, which are often called the great room. An open kitchen makes uh, these collective spaces appear more spacious and facilitates flow or smooth, smooth flow between common areas. Um, here's some beautiful shots of open kitchens. You know, and again, I, th I have my opinion on this and... You know, if this person, their clients are asking for this, who is to argue? There is a debate in the design world on whether or not, you know, open and closed kitchens or open kitchens should be closed up again. And are we moving back towards that? Um, I know I don't think it's really going away anytime soon, but I do see that trend towards more closed kitchens. I, I do see that. However, I, I don't know if it's going to be as widespread as we all think especially if you have a smaller home uh, i i think if you have a smaller home like i have a i have what i consider to be a, a smaller home and by opening up my kitchen the space looks a lot better um closing it up it, it would just it would look too cramped so I, I think it depends on the home size the layout of the home it, it depends on the eating area it depends on a lot of things uh it depends on your taste and what you want and uh, but I don't think as a style or as a trend, it's really going away. But but I do see a you know a little more of a leaning towards towards having something closed off. Here's another picture of a, a nice uh, one with a peninsula. Now, here's what I have to say about it. And um, so the open concept. So so for homeowners who want to take uh, beautiful pictures of their kitchen and post them on the Instagram. Uh, I think that having open concept kitchen is probably um, the better way to go. You know, open concept kitchens take a better picture, generally speaking, if the space is smaller and you can stand back and get a nice picture of your kitchen, thumbs up for you. Uh, but they also work very well with islands and peninsulas, as we can see here, uh, unless the, the closed kitchen is quite large. So if you have a very big kitchen, I've had some clients in the past who uh, wanted, you know, big U-ship kitchen, a big island. It was closed off to the rest of the house, but um, the space was massive. And so, you know, in, in that regard, the kitchen itself, it's such a big room in a home like that, that it's almost its own, it's almost its own open concept, you know, although it's closed off to the rest of the space. Um, but for many of us, we don't, we don't have these massive spaces. And so the open concept kitchen is a way for us to achieve that bigger look and visually and, and more open um, look that, that people do like. Uh, I often say when you, when you take down the wall, like you just won't regret it. You'll love how big and open it feels. But I guess if you don't want that look, then it's it's you know counterintuitive. Um, but also, it it can you can actually the kitchen can be a little more functional overall uh, in a smaller space if you open it up, give you a little more access, a little more freedom. But if you take down a wall, that's another wall that you can't have maybe wall cabinets on or a pantry. So there's a bit of a trade off. So um, you know, I guess for those of us who are considering renovating a kitchen and deciding whether or not we can 
and we want to take down a wall and we can afford it and it's in the budget and we can do all that stuff. Um, are we gaining something by this? What is there to gain? What is there not to gain? I think overall an open concept kitchen um, in terms of how the kitchen functions, uh, you know, it does allow you to, to put in a kitchen island if that's something that you want. Uh, it does feel more open if that's something that you want. But if you want something closed off and you want to have a room that you're not going to see all the dirty dishes and that you're not worried about entertaining while you're in the kitchen, it's, it's two separate functions, then, you know, you kind of weigh those things out. There's no right answer. It depends on how you want to use the space. But in terms of this article and whether or not the kitchen, this kitchen trend is going away, I, I don't see it going away, though I do see a shift towards more closed spaces. So it, kind of a little bit of a, a mix, a mix there. Um, so let's go to the next one. All righty, all righty. Let's see what the next one is. Oh, the, the matte black hardware. Uh, this is, you know, I, I find that some of these are very subjective. A lot of kitchen trends, it's, you know, you like it and I don't like it. And who's right? Well, neither of us are right or wrong. It's just what we like. And so when it comes to these trends, if you like one of these and you want to have them in your kitchen, that's the only thing that really matters because it's your space. Whether or not it's a trend, who really cares? But it's fun to talk about them regardless. But I don't really put a lot of stock in uh, in trends unless you're going to sell the home. And if you're going to sell the home, going to sell the home, then I think probably you should look at what's the most popular in terms of what most consumers are looking for and probably aim in that general you know slope. Um, but other than that, not a big deal. Matte black finish on a hardware. I guess they decided that this is going out of style. Um, let's see. So this is the Google definition of matte black. This is something I just found online. Confident and progressive. The matte black finish can be a defining design element that has the ability to transform an entire space. Man, that reads good. Put on my radio voice for that one. All right, let's go. Here's a couple looks at this, and then we'll read the article for a minute. I like matte black uh, overall. I don't have it in my own space, um, but I do like the look of matte black. To say this is going out of style, I don't know. I mean, I'm not that. I'm not that in, into it. I, I is it? I don't know. Look at that. I, I like that kitchen too. By the way, that's a pretty color green. And uh, you know, I know a guy. I know it's got the shelf and all that weird stuff going on. Well, sorry, not weird, but weird to me. <laughs> I don't want an oil painting in, in, in my kitchen, uh, but it's pretty. I like it. Okay. Not my personal style. Let's keep going, Mark. You're just digging a hole. Uh, here's another beautiful close up of some matte black hardware. Um, all right, let's jump to the article and let's see what we are saying here. Jump down. All right. Matte black hardware. All right. Matte black hardware was everything or it was everywhere in 2022. <laughs> Where do they come up with these things? While matte black hardware was everywhere in 2022, expect to see less of it in 2023. <laughs> oh, I love these articles. Oh, there's the next one. Okay. We have the flippers to thank for this. Oh, house flippers uh, for to thank for this one. Matte, matte black hardware will never really appeal to me. Okay. See, it's subjective. But I do understand that for some... Uh, they appreciate matte black's minimalistic nature and darker tones when opting for a more handsome look, says this um, designer. A good alternative is oil rubbed bronze, which I totally disagree with. Sora, sorry, Sarah. Um, and she predicts more polished nickel and chrome, which I probably is, will be something that that happens. Um, so what do you think of that matte black hardware? I don't know. I mean... I kind of like it, but here's what I have to say about it. Let's jump over here for a second. And I should put this on like its own screen. <laughs> this is a short one. Okay, I think they might have this one right. Um, but again, like I said, it's a very subjective topic. And how do you go about uh, saying whether or not this is going to be out of style? It looks great. What's, what's going to be out of style about that? I don't know. Anyways, um, what I think, what I the, the one I like is more brushed um, gold and brass colors. I think those look really pretty. However, matte black, I think, is still going to be very popular. I don't, I don't know. It could be wrong. In 2024, we'll revisit this maybe and decide, you know, all of these things went totally out of style. I just don't think 
that you know on on January first of twenty twenty three, everyone's like, okay, we gotta get rid of the matte black hardware. It's it's out of style all of a sudden. That's just not how it works. If it was popular in twenty twenty two, it's most likely gonna be popular in twenty twenty three. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> that's what I think about that. Let's go to the next one. Wall cabinets. Ba -ba -ba -ba. We've talked about wall cabinets in the past. I know some of you um, have an opinion on this, the, that you'd want to get rid of wall cabinets. Um, and I think that this is a trend that should be investigated uh, when you're looking to renovate your kitchen. I think that you should at least see what the options are for not having as many wall cabinets. I like the look of, of having less wall cabinets. So with that being said, here's Google's definition of a wall cabinet. All right. Oops, that's just me. Uh, wall cabinets, also known as upper cabinets. Thanks for that clarification, Google. Are the cabinets installed on the wall above the base cabinets? Most wall cabinets are around 12 inches deep. This is true, except for Ikea. They're 14 and three quarters. But they can be as shallow as four inches in a smaller bathroom. Okay, that doesn't matter for us. Or as deep as they need to be for specialty cabinets. So I guess the main thing is that wall cabinets are cabinets on the wall. And um, the alternative to a wall cabinet is not having anything and leaving that space to be completely open uh, or possibly having uh, shelving. Did I just, no, I just totally went to, oh no, that's the right slide. So here's just a, a picture of a kitchen, bigger window. So that's one of the things that can happen if you go with a smaller or, or sorry, no wall cabinets is you can uh, have bigger uh, windows. And um, of course, open shelving can be incorporated if that's something that you're into. And, and that's of course, another topic. Interestingly enough, that is not on their list of, of things that's going out of style. Um, open shelving. Uh, here's another picture here. So this has some wall cabinets uh, on one wall, but not on another. So I like this uh, idea. So you, you still have some storage, uh, but it's not all cluttered. And it, this comes down to the fact of how much do I need? And if you need the wall cabinetry, then you're going to have to have it. If you don't, then maybe it's not necessary and it can look more like something else. Uh, here's another one, more windows. Um, so I guess the key takeaway here is, oh, I like this peninsula, interesting. Uh, the key takeaway for this is that you have to assess your needs. Do you have enough storage? Can you get away with not having wall cabinets and what that would look like? And this is where working with a designer to figure out what that would look like is very helpful. So here's what it looks like with wall cabinets. And here's what it lo looks like without wall cabinets. So you can get some kind of visual aid to help you with that. Because it's very hard to just look at the space yourself and you know decide whether, whether you want it or, or not want it. Another thing that's important to do is not just pick something because it's a trend or it looks trendy. In and then you're like, oh, I, I should have really had wall cabinets. Now, you can always get wall cabinets later. So if it doesn't work out, not a big deal. Let's go to the article and let's just see what the article has to say uh, about wall cabinets. And we'll see what their takeaway is. So the days of standard closed up cabinets are starting to dwindle and will be replaced by open shelving. Mm, okay. Upper cabinets are going away. Beautiful, beautifully styled open shelving is here to stay. What? Get out of town. Doing away with upper cabinets is a great way to save money and create an opportunity to show off your personality by creating beautifully styled vignettes. Why? <laughs> Why do you want to do that? It's like your kitchen. Anyway, <laughs> but doing this also means... Um, keeping it edited and uncluttered. Our clients are very into hiding everything from dishes to appliances. Okay, so if you're into hiding them, putting them open shelves is not a good idea. Gone are the days of ceramics and cookbooks on display. What? The minimal uncluttered look is in. People, the minimal and uncluttered look is in, according to the minimalists. The maximalists have something else to say about that. Cookbooks belong in the pantry and up. Appliances are hidden by cabinetry tubes to obtain zen, uncluttered look. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know where these people get this stuff from. <laughs> Let's go back to this. All right. 
Oh my gosh, this is a great comment. What's for dinner? Beautifully styled vignettes. <laughs> That's just wonderful. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay, let's go to my thoughts because I have a particular thought about this. Um, okay, wall cabinets. While I think this is a very interesting design um, choice or design option, okay, I don't think this will become a, a popular trend that easily because you, for so long you're used to having wall cabinets. When you go to have a kitchen renovated, having wall cabinets is part of that process. Um, it's part of what you expect a kitchen to look like. So not having wall cabinets is definitely a stretch for most people, regardless of the look, regardless of the big windows. Um, it's still a big stretch. So I don't think this is something that's just not going to be a trend. It, it, to call cabinets on the wall a trend anyway is a little bit far, far of a stretch for me. But you know what I'm saying. Here's my problem. If you're willing to lose your wall cabinets, but you get mad at me for suggesting you should block off your corner cabinet, we need to have a chat. All right. So if you're out there and you're like, and you, if you're one of the people out there who've commented on one of my videos saying, you know, th th this is a dumb idea to block off a, a corner cabinet because of all the space you're losing, but you're an advocate for losing wall cabinets. No, not going to work. So you got to be in both camps. You got to, you got to stick together. If you're getting rid of cabinetry and getting rid of space, then no wall cabinets or corner cabinets. All right. Just to be clear, do I think this is a trend that's going to stay? Of course, no. I, I, I think it's people are going to start investigating it. I think it's worth looking into, but be very careful. Make sure you have enough storage. Make sure you have what you need in your kitchen and don't just go with it because you think it looks nice. However, I do. Um, <laughs> I, do <laughs> I do think it's a good idea. Um, yes. I didn't get slapped though. Um, I do think, oh, maybe in the comments I did. I do think it's a good idea to at least look at it and at least look at getting a bigger window and incorporating that. And maybe if that means less wall cabinets, then that might be an okay thing. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. This is fun. Faux finishes. Not three finishes, but faux finishes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Uh, what's a faux finish, you ask? Hmm. Faux painting or faux finishing are terms used to describe a decorative paint finish finishes uh, that replicate the appearance of materials such as marble, wood, or stone. All right, so basically they're they're false finishes. They're made to look like um, what they're not. Now, um, if you are online anytime and you you see videos of people painting their countertops to look like marble, this would be an example of a faux finish. And in fact, uh, laminate countertop is, in my opinion, I guess would be in that as well. It's a, it's made to look like something that it isn't. And so therefore that's a faux finish too. Uh, so here's a, a couple pictures. Now this one was, um, I think this is a laminate, but I've been looking through some of these videos where they're painting countertops and they look pretty impressive. The ones that are, are done well, um, not something that I think I'd want to take on personally, um, here's, here's one here you can see it's all taped off and they're, I mean, I don't know what, this is like a clean paintbrush. I don't know what they're doing with this. They're just posing for a picture. I'm not sure if this is uh, actually, I don't know if they're painting this or not, but anyway, um, maybe this is, they got some gray in the, in the thing there. Oh, uh, maybe they are. I don't know. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, they're saying faux finishes are on their way out. I'm going to read you the article here in a second. Here's another one here. This is laminate. This one's, this is the laminate. Uh, I think it's for Mica. It's called Dolce Vita. Very popular when it first came out about five, six, seven years ago. I forget now. Um, it became a stock color in many, many places. Uh, very, very popular color uh, made to mimic um, Dolce Vita granite. So um, beautiful. Uh, yeah, quartz is also a faux finish, yes, because it's it's not real. So yeah, that's, uh, that's another one. But um, so here's what the article has to say, <clears throat> excuse me, about faux finishes. All right. 2023, by the way, is all about keeping it real in the kitchen. 
<laughs> keep it real in the kitchen, people, in 2023. All right. So enough of you fakers out there. According to Loren, whoever, president of whatever, faux anything, ooh, such as quartz that looks like marble, is definitely a kitchen trend going away. Okay, for the luxury consumer in 2023. Okay, well, whatever. Okay, for the discerning client, ooh, natural stone for floors, countertops, and backsplash is the only way to go. It is a classic look for the kitchen that transcends trends. The discerning of you out there who are a luxury consumer in 2023, um, natural stone is the only way to go. I, I don't like this at all. Here's the thing. Here's, here's my take on it. And let me just read you what I have to say. Uh, th this is not a trend issue. This is a budget issue. Um, people are ultimately going to opt for what they can, aff can afford. And that has nothing to do with trends. Uh, that has to do with the fact that, uh, and, and even if it did, some people don't want marble uh, in their kitchen. Some people want to do uh, these types of things. And, and that's totally fine. So this, in my opinion, is not, um, and, and since when is quartz and, and not a luxury material? I mean, they're very pricey. In fact, it's more pricey than some granites. Now, it's not marble. Maybe that's what they're talking about, or it's maybe some other high-end materials. But the fact of the matter is that, no, I think that lug, that faux finishes, faux show are, are going to be not going away anytime soon. Really? Maybe for the, the, the ultra-luxury people, okay, we get it. You go ahead and buy your marble and whatever. But for most of us out there, it's a budget issue, and the other stuff looks nice anyways. I, I like laminate, and there's nothing wrong with it, and it looks beautiful, and quartz is a beautiful product comes in many different design styles and choices. So this one, I totally don't agree with at all. Now, do I encourage you to go paint your countertop? I'm, I don't know if I do, you know, you know, because I'm just, I just wonder about how toxic it is, not about the finished product, but basically how, how toxic that is for the end user. No FOMO. <laughs> oh, Jackie, love it. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Let's keep, I hope you're tracking with me here. This is fun. All right, another one on the list of, of the 12 design trends that are going away in 2023 is herringbone backsplash. The meaning of herringbone is a pattern made up of rows of parallel lines, which in any Two adjacent rows slope in the opposite direction. Weird way to put it, but basically it's like they overlap and, and they're on 45s. So the, the herringbone is going out of style. Here's a picture of a herringbone uh, backsplash. Here's another one. Looks very nice. And uh, finally this one. Now this one to me is a bit much, but you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely interesting. So uh, let's look at what they're saying about herringbone because that's that's really interesting. I'd like to see what uh, what it is they're talking about. Herringbone backsplashes. Herringbone backsplashes fell back into favor around the time herringbone flooring did a few years ago. Okay, but according to Christopher Peacock, founder of and CEO of Christopher Peacock. <laughs> I'm the CEO and founder of Mark Tobin. Uh, herringbone patterns are, are, are good for a floor, but not so much for a backsplash, as you can get too busy and you need a large area to appreciate it fully. Well, I'm not totally disagreeing with you there, Christopher Peacock. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe if this was a larger area, I could appreciate that fully. Maybe I just don't like this particular pattern. Um, but here's here's my thoughts on this whole topic. And you can let me know what you think. All right. Herringbone backsplash. I, th I kind of thought that, that herringbone... Um, sorry. Where'd I go? Oh, there it is. I kind of thought that herringbone was just becoming more popular, not, not less popular. So I was a little surprised at this one. But again, I am not... Um, <laughs> 
I am not, uh, you know, an interior design specialist, so I could, you know, totally, totally okay with that. And I could be okay with being wrong. Um, so I just, I thought herringbone was, was becoming more popular. Uh, of all the tile patterns out there, um, I would have thought that that subway tile would be less trendy, not herringbone. So this is an interesting one for me. Let me know your thoughts. You can put it in the chat. You can discuss it. Um, is herringbone something that you think is going out of style? To me, it, it just seems like it's, I don't think it's a timeless thing, but I definitely don't think it's, it's on its way out. But hey, now, uh, that doesn't mean that I want to have it. I, I don't. I don't want herringbone. I don't particularly like it. Um, but that's just me. But I, I still think it's it's kind of trendy. But anyway, I could be totally wrong. Let me know what you think. Let's go to the next one. Carrera Marble. Now, this one's funny because just a minute ago, they're saying that faux finishes uh, are out in replace of high-end finishes like Carrera Marble. And then they put on their list... Carrera Marble <laughs> is going out of style. Like, we can't win here. What What is it? Is it faux finishes are going or Carrera Marble, actual marble is going out of style? Anyway, this is Carrera Mar Marble. Durability and, and added property value. By default, Carrera Marble significantly boosts the financial value to any property it is used in. This is due to its beauty, clean aesthetic and unique character that can transform any space from drab to elegant, modern and luxurious. All right. Here's an interesting one here. Check this out. Isn't that something? Look at that. That is uh, quite the piece of marble. I mean, I'm assuming it's Carrera, but maybe it's not. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Another one here. This got on the backsplash. Plus, I got backsplash tile on the island. Very nice indeed. And then here's just another view. So this pretty classic Carrera marble look in faux finish or in the real thing. You know, is it going in or is it not? Like, what what's the deal here? Um, so let's go to the let's go to the uh, the article. All right, here we go. Here's what they're saying about Carrera Marble. This is another hot topic because Carrera Marble, while beautiful and beloved by almost everybody, <laughs> okay, has become almost annoyingly omnipresent. But in the same sentence, you said it's beautiful and beloved by almost everybody. So in 2023, by the way, this is a great article. I'm just having fun. In 2023, we're likely to see a lot less of it, just like that. Peacock thinks homeowners can do better. All right. He thinks you can do better. You luxury clients out there. I believe Carrera is overused and classic Carrera has changed so much. Now it's hard to find a good slab. It's not for me unless I can find a nice piece that has lots of white in it. There are so many white marbles, but they are super expensive. So Carrera can be a good for budget, but it's not considered as beautiful as other white marbles out there. So all that being said, maybe you're absolutely right, Christopher Peacock. Um, but in the same breath, yeah, it's beautiful and everybody loves it. So, you know, you, you got to make up your mind. And the reason that all these faux finishes are, are also mimicking this look is just, uh, oops, another, that's the next one, is just another reason to think that maybe Maybe this is in the article to fill space. I'm not sure. I don't think faux finishes are going out of style. And I don't think Carrera Marble is just like that overnight going to vanish. Um, because you want more luxurious marbles. Anyway, it's fun to talk about. Carrera Marble. Um, the less Carrera Marble, basically. It's just that style of marble with the gray veinings in it. Uh, you get a lot of sculpt marble sculptures built out of Carrera Marble as well. Um, it's very popular because it's it's um just there's a lot of it so all right let's go to the next one <laughs> appliances over the range oh did i did i give you my two cents on career marble i don't think i did here let's go in oh i sort of did i i talked about it so yeah uh, while Carrera is certainly one of the most common marble and stone pattern choices i think there is a timelessness to it that will keep it from entering 
obscurity. I should write a book. All right, let's go. I'm gonna write my own design book. All right, let's do this one. Hey, there's me again. Okay, appliances over the range. I mean, okay, so this one I'm on to. Um, For obvious reasons. Over the range microwaves installed above your range or cooktop in place of a range hood. They function like countertop microwaves, but also eliminate smoke, steam, and cooking odors through a built-in ventilation system. So this is the beloved. Oops. The beloved over the range microwave. Now, I did my very best to pick pictures that looked nice. Cause you all know that I don't like them. And I know some of you love them. I know Jackie has a beautiful one. Um and I don't want to just go off, of course. So I, I picked ones that I thought looked nice, okay, to be fair. And um, because for some homeowners, this is the best solution. And so if you're going to pick one, um, pick a nice one. But let's have a, a couple of looks here. So, I mean, it's hard to find a nice picture of these. I'm sorry. I love that penny tile, though, by the way. That looks really cool. Um, it's hard to find a nice picture because they're just so, so hideous. Uh, anyway, uh, and here's another one here. So take them or leave them. Look at that hardware, right? Okay, so what did they have to say? Over the range appliances. Here we go. Over the range. Uh, okay, installing a microwave over the range has been the standard for years, but now that standard is changing. Just say no to putting appliances over the range making a fabulous design feature out of the space above the range far away is uh, the alt you, oh, utilitarian trend of using that area to house an appliance. Some people might say it's a shame not to claim this upper cabinet section for added storage or uh, for an appliance. Okay, so uh, Tamara, I agree with you uh, on this one. I am I'm all for it. Everybody knows it. Uh, that being said, if you're going to put one in, that's no problem. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, you can you can still be on the live stream. But here's my thoughts on it. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, the article got this one right for sure. Okay, I do think that no no surprise there. Of course, this is not not a big surprise. My bigger concern is how we let this become a trend in the first place. Why is this even on? a list of trends. Uh, that would be my bigger concern. So I think, I think I might get booted from my own live stream. Um, Jackie, you still here? <laughs> she probably blocked me. Anyways, let's go to the next one. I think they got that one right. Contemporary aesthetic. What in the world does this even mean? I did a TikTok the other day with all these 12 and I was just like a peanut filter. I'm just doing random TikToks these days uh, just for fun, just because I think it's funny. Um, all right. <laughs> Getting the boot. I'm going to actually do an actual video on these as well. Um, that's more more edited. So if you're watching this, uh, stay tuned for a more curated a more curated vignette type video. Contemporary aesthetic. What in the world? I guess this just means contemporary kitchen style. And that's why it's on the list in the poll. Um, so if you haven't voted yet on the poll, uh, vote which one you'd least likely to have in your kitchen, farmhouse, contemporary, or ultra modern. Okay. Contemporary aesthetic. So a modern kitchen design offers streamlined and minimalist, a minimalist styling with uh, clean lines and open spaces with ample storage. Think flat front cabinetry, sleek fixtures, stone features, wood accents, and stylish tile. All right, so this is going away according to this article. Now, when it comes to kitchen design styles, the, the lines get blurred uh, because you can mix and match a lot of them together and, and they can kind of overlap. So when you, when you type in or Google something like contemporary kitchen style, uh, it can be challenging to come up with something that's a true contemporary kitchen style. And there can be argument about what that even is. Uh, but I did my best to kind of get us a, a few pictures of what that can look like. Uh, so if, for instance, this looks very contemporary to me. Well, this 
um has more like transitional vibe to it i guess i don't know you can tell me i'm not even a, a interior designer but to me this looks more um of a contemporary look i like this kitchen by the way i mean it's it's different for sure but i like i just like different i like seeing different things and and this is different so i guess maybe that's why i like it it just doesn't look like the normal kitchen that i would even design so i, I love that about it and then here's another one here. So uh, I love that range hood. Um, very, very cool. Okay, what are they What are they against um, contemporary aesthetic for? Let's have a look. All right, HGTV star, Mark Tobin. Oh, Francesca, Fran Frances Francesca? Grace, sorry if I mispronounced your name there, Francesca. Uh, shares organic kitchen aesthetics are beginning to look dated. As a maximalist, I tend to stay away from neutral palettes. Well, there you go. If you're a maximalist and you don't like minimal, you don't like minimalism. So obviously, you're going to be against this. But that doesn't mean that the trend is going away in 2023. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more color in the kitchen in 2023. Okay, so I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, think lots of rich colored hues like dark greens, blacks, blues. Even Marlowe colored cabinets with countertops with more character, uh, like beautifully veined marble, but not Carrera marble because that's going away in 2023. Um, anyways, I don't even know. Let's here's my take on it. Contemporary aesthetic. When I hear the word contemporary, I think of things that are current. So the word to me personally. Oh, there's the next one. Sorry. Uh, it, it brings up things that are, are current. So in other words, um, my contemporaries in this industry, like on YouTube, uh, when it comes to kitchen design, I think of Jeff from Home Some Studios and I think of Michael from Kitchen Kitchen Cider. So those would be like my contemporaries because we're, we're all in the same like lane uh, in the same kind of realm as far as, as what we do. Um, and so... I feel like contemporary design changes with the times. So what's contemporary now is going to be different than what's contemporary in, in 20 years. Uh, this is like philosophical kitchen design speak. I just picking it out of here. Um, and so, yes, this, this era we live in will likely become dated uh, and will be need to change. So it, overall is contemporary design um, going to go away it's going to change because what's contemporary is going to change because that's kind of, isn't that really the meaning of what contemporary is? So um, that being said, these particular design styles, in my opinion, I, I don't know. In 2023, they're just, we flip the switch and we don't like them anymore. I don't think so. So yeah, contemporary, it's, it's always going to be there because it's contemporary. <laughs> so it's, it's like, I don't know. It's just a weird design trend word. Maybe I think maybe it's just the wrong word. We need to come up with a new word to describe this particular style because, uh, I don't think it's contemporary. <laughs> She's not a therapist. Sometimes you just got to talk it out, Matthew, you know, you, you just got to talk these things out, get, get it out, get it out there. <laughs> All right, let's do the next one. Uh, there's a, I think there's two or three more left. Okay, farmhouse style. So this is, is another one that's on our list in our poll uh, on whether or not you think this is a style you'd least like like to have. But uh, farmhouse style is also on their list. So they're, they're cutting off all these design styles for us in this video. There's three of them. Um, and here's the definition on the Google. An interior design style that prioritizes practicality, simplicity, and rustic charm. While farmhouse style tends to reflect the aesthetics of rural architecture, it also embraces modern comforts, creating a look that feels both cozy and stylish. Beautiful. That brings tears to my eyes. Here you go. This is rustic for you, as rustic as it gets, in my opinion. This is really, truly what I would consider farmhouse with the brick fireplace, the big mantle, the beams, the floor, the shelving, the... The reclaimed wood, the, the whole thing just screams farmhouse. You even got two farmhouse sinks in this one. So, yes, beautiful. I mean, then you got this massive 42 or 48 inch gas range uh, 
48 probably plunked in the center there. Um, very super modern. So this is like a, you know, a modern farmhouse. Uh, here's another one. Definitely less farmhousey to me. This doesn't even look farmhouse, but it, but when you go, when I Googled it, this is what came up. Anyway, this doesn't even look farmhouse to me, but I guess maybe because it's shaker. Um, I guess here's another farmhouse C, mo more modern farmhouse style. <laughs> farmhouse kitchens are great in, in actual farmhouses. Well, I mean, by nature of the word, yeah, it would have to be a farmhouse kitchen if it's in a farmhouse. So, so here you go. Well, let's see what they're saying about it, and uh, we'll see. Farmhouse style kitchens. Live, laugh, and love. <laughs> farmhouse style kitchen. I liked what they did there. Will no longer be on trend in 2023. You hear that? According to Forbes.com in this article, I'm sorry, but it's just not going to be a trend in 2023. We've all seen them over and over again. And it's time that this style gets a revamp, which can be easily done, people. This is a trend that has started to become basic. We want to see more character and personality in a kitchen. And I think we'll be seeing a lot of that in the future. Bam! You go, girl. Because... It is hard to find more character than this. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Uh, I don't, it's not for me, but I don't hate it. Is it just not going to be a thing in 2023? I highly doubt it. People love this stuff. Let You know what? I haven't looked at the poll. Let's just go there for a minute. I want to see... Um, what the poll has to say. I just want to have a quick boo. All right. So 53% so far have chosen ultra modern as the one that least prefer contemporary only 13% and 34 are saying that farmhouse style. So, I mean, it's not in last place. So there you go. Uh, many of you, 34% of you, in fact, um, uh, oh, uh, out of 69 votes are saying that uh, no, this is a this is something that you like. So that being said, I don't know. Let's go to what I had to say about it. Farmhouse style. There are elements. <laughs> I'm laughing because I wrote this, and I think it's funny reading back things that I wrote. There are elements of farmhouse style that can transition well into other styles. A farmhouse sink, for instance, and open shelving. Those aren't just for that particular style. They, they can be in other styles and still fit in well. It's a style. Um, is the style itself becoming less trendy in 2023? It, that's a lot to commit to. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. But uh, according to these professionals, it's, it is. So just beware. Um, I don't know what to tell you on that one. I just don't think it's going away. That At least it's not going away that easily. Let's go to the next one. Tile backsplash. Now, this one really gets to me. Um, I, I don't know why this one was on the list. Here's, here's what tile backsplashes are. A panel behind a sink or a stove that protects the wall from splashes. So we all know what, what, what tile backsplash is. Why is it on a list of design trends that are going away for 2023? Like, where did that come from? Why all of a sudden is tile backsplash going away? All right, so let's uh, let's go to the article and see what they have to say, and then we'll look at a few pictures and uh, go from there. So tile backsplashes. Oh, sorry here. Let me just enlarge that. Yeah, sorry about that. I just... Uh... I just backed out of my own my own live here. All right, where are we at? Do we get to this one yet? Oh yeah, well, full finishes. Sorry, people. Oh, a little. This is why I need a. Oh no, we got that one. I need a producer. Okay. Yeah, let's just keep going. Farmhouse, we got that. Okay, towel backsplash. Okay, here we go. Back to normal, and let's go to my article. Oh my gosh. 
gosh. Okay. My apologies. Share screen window. Here we go. Sorry for that technical hiccup. We're back. Okay. Artbury and Cook. Uh, tile backsplashes. Here's what they have to say. Uh, tell me that patterned backsplash tiles, um, tile backsplashes, are being... Be are beginning to become less preferable. Patterned or mosaic wall tile can create a busy aesthetic and look dysfunctional. That's not very nice. Opt for a solid slab stone to match the countertops for a calm, simple look. You can also have fun with cabinetry paint colors. Okay. <laughs> that has nothing to do with your backsplash tile. But anyways. Um, all right. Well, what do you think about that? Maybe. Maybe this looks dysfunctional. Maybe it doesn't. Um, this isn't particularly for me, but I think it looks interesting. Okay, maybe this is what they're talking about. Backsplash tile that looks like that. Uh, my bathroom floor has that type of tile. It's not blue like that, but it has that, that kind of pattern. Um, and I, I do tend to like it just behind a range and maybe not on the rest of the wall, but it, whatever. Uh, yeah, I like this. I, I think this looks kind of cool um, with the the other tile kind of mixed in. I, would, I wouldn't have done it like I would have just done it behind the range and maybe the whole that whole space and then do the rest with the white. But anyway. Uh, I don't hate this. Is it going out of style? I don't know. It's so subjective. These are the things that I mean when we talk about styles that it's hard to really pinpoint, you know, whether it's your taste or not. To say that it's going out of style in 2023 is is totally different. We know Jackie doesn't like it. Yuck. Um, <laughs> she didn't like that one either. But Natasha didn't like it either. Not for me. A lot of you don't like this uh, this kind of thing. Well, maybe it is going out of style. What do I know? Here's my take on it. Let's see what I had to say. Tile backsplashes. Okay, I love one-piece slab backsplashes. So... Um, it's very expensive, so it's not something I can do. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to have faux finishes, <laughs> so I don't want to use a laminate sheet. Um, this is me. So that being said, I, I, I do like the look of, uh, of what they're saying, going with a matching piece of stone on the back. Um, and I'm not overly confident with laminate sheets, uh, but due to the price gap between tiling your backsplash and the ability to do it yourself. And putting in a slab, which has to be fabricated and installed and costs quite a bit of uh, money, due to that gap, um, I, I don't think that, that tiles as a trend are going to be going away. Um, especially, like, yeah, Barbara here is saying it makes a statement. So if, uh, I don't know if you're just talking about tile or if you're talking about one piece backsplashes, but this makes a statement. And if that's what you're going for, then that's, that's definitely a way to do it. Is it for everyone? No, of course not. None of these things are for everyone. That's really the point. But to uh, put them on a list of things that are going out of style, it's fun to talk about. I, I take these lists with a real grain of salt because who who are you to say any of this stuff? Who am I to say any of this stuff? <laughs> to give my prediction. Think about it, people. It's it's just for fun. All of these things are for fun. Of course, there there's pro you know there could be some. Ulterior motive, you want to drive sales to some other product, maybe. Um, who knows? However, that being said, let's go to the last one, which is ultra modern design. Ultra modern design. What's this cup say, by the way? But first, coffee. Fun. Typically consists of open spaces, minimalist features, and simple color or simple color palette, uh, offering a clutter-free sp uh, space to relax and entertain. Yeah. So, you know, what, what a horrible thing. <laughs> Here's a couple of pictures of, of, of ultra-modern. And, and so when you think ultra-modern, you think glossy, white, you know, flat panel. But um, it can mean other things, too. This is a lot of different textures and finishes involved. Um, a lot of geometry happening here. We have this one. Now, this looks to me quite quite modern. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what that box is there on the left. Is that like an appliance of some sort or a cabinet? Yeah, it's so modern. I don't even know what half of this is. Um, but yeah, that's very modern overall. And he, I mean, here you go. There's your 
ultra modern look there. Okay. Not my thing, but that doesn't mean it's going out of style. Let's see what the article has to say. If I can do this without kicking myself out of my own live stream. All right, ultra modern. Renetta and Samantha, co-founders of IG Workshop, predict cold modern elements such as glossy finishes and sharp edges will be replaced by warmer, cozier styles. Okay, kitchens are now cozier and warmer. Designers are staying away from glossy finishes and sharp edges. We are looking at curved islands, wood tones, and interesting uses of texture. Hone and leather stones are replacing the glossy slabs and are uh, and more daring colors have been incorporated uh, into the designs. I don't disagree with, with this assessment. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I do see more curves coming about um, and, you know, wood finishes and all that kind of stuff. And definitely there's a, a movement away from ultra glossy finishes and, and, and the like. So, you know, I think maybe they could be onto something here for sure uh, on this one. Um, you know, of course, with anything like this, you're going to get some right, you get some wrong, and all of it's subjective in, in the end. But let's see, here's what I have to say about it. Like, my opinion matters. Um, there's a market for every style. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, some people like it, so it's, it's always going to be around. But do I think the ultra modern will ultimately go down as a fad? So I'm, I, I think that this will, you know, probably fizzle into something else, though there are always going to be people who want this kind of style. And so you can't say it's going to go away forever. But yes, I do think there's a leaning away from the sharpness and the glossiness and more people want, they do want that cozier look. Now, and according to our poll um, on the chat there, so if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you can get on to that uh where are we at here with the poll so where are we at now we're still at 52 percent are saying that ultra modern is the thing that they least prefer um contemporary is at 13 percent, and farmhouse at 35 percent. so contemporary kitchen looks like it would be the one that uh, most people like and and whatnot and then then farmhouse and then ultra modern so so those those are the twelve kitchen trends. If I if I get a chance, I'll put that I'll put a link to that article in the description of this video, and as well um, some other links for things. If you want to, I'm trying to just fix my camera. Sorry, my hands there. Just trying to get that focus right. Okay, um, let's go to the. I've been kind of ignoring the comments. So if you have uh, anything you want to say, now's the time to say it while I'm looking. Um, Pam thinks that ultra modern looks like a hotel lobby. Yeah, yeah, sort of does. Maureen, kitchens date the house. If you choose trends, you date your space. Some of these designs are very expensive and will not be around long. That's the other thing, right? Um, a lot of this stuff is very expensive. So when it comes down to like whether or not you want a faux finish ver version of a real, a real finish, um, you know, that can be very expensive. And yeah, they do date your space. But with all of those, um, with all of those trends, stop screen, there we go. Um, you know, when it comes to say like a white kitchen or all of these different styles that people like, you, you can weave them into any of those uh, design styles. Yeah. Timeless finish all the way, uh, says Natasha. Yeah. And there's some things I think are timeless. Like, honestly, I... I Backsplash tile to me seems like something that's fairly timeless. White kitchens, of course, they're pretty timeless. Um, you know, the, the marble look, whether it's faux or real, it's a pretty timeless look. Um, and then, you know, pops of color and things like that, things that, that bring out your personality, things that really, uh, you know, make the kitchen stand out. Those are things that can be easily changed and replaced and, and you know, give your kitchen a little bit of, of breath and some life. Um, so, <laughs> you gotta be careful uh, when you're dating your space. Yeah, is kit gloves. That's all I can say. All right, kit gloves. So that's that was fun. I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, bit of 
fun information. I like looking at these articles and just seeing what, what they have to say. And, and at least this one had 12 design styles or 12, you know, trends, because sometimes you get on them. There's like 75 kitchen trends that are blah, blah, blah. I'm like 75. Like, really? Uh, how, 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 how can you go through 75 of these? Um, but it's fun. Um, take you to the dump, you guys. What do you think of now? Larger natural stone tiles instead of standard tile. Um, yeah, I almost did that on mine upstairs. Uh, hit the like button for sure. Thanks, Jackie, for reminding us. Um, I almost did that. In fact, I bought the tile. It was a big two by two tile uh, that looked like Carrera marble. Um, and I ultimately decided to not do that and to go with um, more of a subway look that were like subway tiles that are all lined up um not not like overlapped so that's that's uh but i like the look of that i think it'd be okay um i'm not a fan of grout so like even when i do mine it'd be the least amount of grout as possible so yeah i think if done right it can look really nice i'm not a, i'm not against the the larger tiles at all Oh, Sarah's demolition starts in 10 days. That's exciting. Um, listen, if you've been watching so far, it's been an hour. We're going to jump off in a second. We're going to look around the chat for a little bit. But um, technically, this is, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> so I'm really going to be babbling from here on in the rest of this. So uh, thanks so much for everyone for being here. I really do appreciate it. And um, thanks uh, if you're a new subscriber. Thanks if you're an old subscriber. Thanks even if you're not a subscriber and you just watch my videos because everybody who engages with the content, uh, it really helps. So I really do appreciate it. Uh, all the thumbs up and the comments and all that stuff, it's it's really good. Even thumbs down and negative comments, it's all engagement. So bring it on. It's all good. Uh, except if you get rude and I'll just kick you out. No big deal. <laughs> I can handle it. Um, what do you think about mixing painted cabinets with wood finish? No problem at all. Um, I think it looks, it can look great or it can look horrible. Depends on how you do it. Um, but I think it, look, it can look fine for sure. Oak is definitely making a comeback. So uh, I think that can be something that really looks good. What do you think about keeping kitchen design? What do you, what do you think about keeping kitchen design with house design? Um, not exactly sure what you mean by that question. What do you think about keeping kitchen design with house design? Like, in terms of the overall style of the house, should the kitchen match that? I, I'm guessing that's maybe what you're saying. I'm just looking for clarification, but um, I think, yeah, it can be, uh, I think that's important to take into consideration. So if you have like a farmhouse, you know, through the whole place and you have ultra modern kitchen, it just might not look good, but you're the person living there. So if you like it, that's really the main thing. If you're going to sell it, maybe not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's hard. hard. I, I would probably not go too far off the, the overall style of the home. If it's, if your house is a real particular style, you want to kind of, you kind of want it to match. But again, it's really a personal decision. Um, yeah, matching the design. So I'll throw those. Yeah, I think it's it's probably like a good idea, but has to have a, co a cohesive flow. Yeah. I mean, then that's for company coming over and being like, what what did you do here? But if you like it, you like it. So I don't think, I don't really think there's a, a, a wrong way. All right. Awesome. Appreciate y'all. Have a great rest of your week. I'm going to, uh, this week's video is, is a portion of my um, design workshop where I'm showing you how to uh, draw um, a kitchen floor plan. And so you can uh, check that out if you want on Saturday. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you for watching and uh, we will see you very soon. Next Wednesday, we'll be here again uh, chatting about what's next Wednesday. Oh, I'll be on March break here. Say happy birthday to my wife. It's her birthday tomorrow. And um, so that's, that's awesome. So um, I'm going to go hang out with her now and the family. And I love you all. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.